Hello traders, welcome to our week end analysis. Today is October 27, right now it's almost 6:30 p.m. So obviously market has closed. So let's uh, let's let's get a quick recap of what had happened this week. So uh, basically, you know, the biggest winner this week was let me typo here. The biggest winner this week was once again US dollar. Now, uh, first of all, just take a look at the uh, DAX, right? You can tell from the beginning of the week, uh, 23rd, we already at this very high uh, resistant area. We had a little bit deep in the midweek, mid of the week, but basically uh, it just continued to go higher and higher and basically finish up the week. Now, this deep actually came from a few things. Uh, there, there was a, a notable uh, profit taking ahead of the ECB event, and that's that's reasonable because a lot of trader wants to hedge out the risk since they ha they have probably already made some money last week, so they don't want to risk too much ahead of the uh, European Central Bank uh, event, which had happened this week. A uh, second thing is throughout during the week there was a rumor that Donald Trump, you know, right now he is selecting for a next Federal Reserve chair. And right now the candidate is between Powell and Tyler. But during the week, there was a rumor that Jenny Yellen, which is the current chair, uh, is still on his uh, candidate list. Now, of course, Yellen had been known to be a very dovish Fed chair. So the market definitely don't like that. They don't want Yellen to continue to become the chair. So there was a rumor that significantly weakened the US dollar. Of course, it turned out that was just a rumor and the uh, dollar basically went up. So, US dollar went up again, not because there is any significant catalyst for dollar itself. You know, if you look at US dollar, or if you look at this week's calendar, there really weren't any notable uh, fundamental data that drive US dollar. Aside from today, Friday, we have the advanced GDP, which is at 3%. But dollar already went up ahead of this. So dollar basically become very strong because all other currency has become very weak. Now that's why we'll talk more about it. So US dollar become strong, not because the fundamental data, because the fundamental picture had been very, very resilient already. So that's pretty much what had happened right now. Understand what's driving US dollar. It's more from a political sentiment. You know, right now, What's gonna uh, basically keep US dollar in a higher place will come from uh, first the uh, Fed, Federal Reserve, the chair. Uh, who is the next chair? Is it gonna be Powell? Is it gonna be Tyler? And who knows? It might really be Jenny Yellen, right? Nobody really knows the result. It's just a lot of rumors. So that's gonna drive US dollar significantly. Second thing is the tax cut plan. Now, if that tax cut plan really passed, you know, then that's also going to drive US dollar. Basically, you have a, a, a fresh new belief and faith into the White House administration, into the Congress. Uh, because if tax cut plan passed, that means that Trump can, you know, really implement any other pro-business policy. He might continue to deregulate it. All those things are very uh, positive for the financial market. Aside from that, you have to understand fundamentally US dollar had been very strong. The recovery of the US economy had been one of the strongest one, basically. So if you look at all these things combined, there's really no other catalyst that can put US dollar to the downside at the moment. So that's what's happening for US dollar. Now, next week, of course, the beginning of November, you will have non-farm payroll, right? That's the usual monthly event. But just to know that this non-farm payroll, you know, don't be surprised by the huge gap. You know, some people are not really aware exactly why we have a minus 33,000 here and suddenly you have this expectation. It, this, this negative number was because the hurricane. There was a really big, big uh, natural disaster in U.S. You know, a uh, couple months ago. So that's why this data, this deviation is a little bit wide. But basically, if you're looking at the non-farm payroll, you know, as any other non-farm payroll for the past couple months, 
as I kept mentioning, the only important thing is to look at the average earning. Why? Because right now the only weak fundamental data for U.S. dollar had been the inflation. You know, employment is perfect. You know, all the、uh, PMI data at a GDP and the, and the、um, retail sales. You know, consumer、uh, consumptions. All those things are doing very well. The only thing that's lacking behind is the inflation. Now, how do I know that? You know, just follow through the central bank. Central bank, the only thing that kept their worry about the、uh, interest rate or the hiking path is this inflation number, and they had come out previously saying that the anticipated inflation number is just essentially transitory. Basically, they think. The the weakness right now is just temporary. It should recover. However, that was not the case, and that's really the biggest doubt for the U.S. economy right now. So, understand the average earning or anything to do with inflation will be the biggest、uh, focus point for the U.S. data. Now, obviously, last last data we have zero point five percent. Now it's anticipated to be lower, but regardless. I personally really don't think fundamental data had too much has too much weight for the U.S. dollar right now. As at least for next week, I think what's really driving dollar right now will be the Federal Reserve chair selection and the、uh, any you know tax cut plan, any kind of、uh, progress through the Congress. So basically, it will comes more from the political stance than the fundamental itself. Because of that, I'm still very bullish in U.S. dollar. In fact, you know, all my dollar trade had been working very well this week, and I'm, you know, intend to continue buying dollar unless things has changed. Now, euro is the biggest disappointment this week. Now, why do I say that? Because there was the biggest events of ECB this week, and you know, it's a very interesting. Uh, effect. It happened over and over again. I'm gonna show you in the chart later on. Basically, what we had here is a classic buy rumor, sell fact effect. So, traders and market will anticipate it,、uh, ECB to unwind their、uh, asset purchase program. They're not gonna cancel it. They're not gonna stop it for sure. But market was anticipated them to unwind it to purchase less. And、uh, anyhow, that was of course exactly the result. So, if you're looking at the fundamental, if you don't. If you don't look at any journalist article, if you just look at data, you will actually think it's a positive thing because it is. They cut the program from sixty billion dollars to thirty、uh, billion dollars per month. That's very positive. However, the reason dollar euro dropped was because it has been highly anticipated. So basically, people or traders got over themselves buying the euro and hoping for a very positive outcome. And when that outcome did not come, they were very disappointed, so they dumped euro. And that, again, that sounds very familiar because it's a classic buy buy rumor and sell fact effect. Now, of course,、uh, many of you know this Friday today, the Catalonia had announced independent, and now the Spanish government had triggered the Article One Fifty Five. So that's a very、uh, geopolitical event that's going to affect the eurozone. Now we don't know exactly what's going to happen. As I mentioned before,、uh, most likely it's a civil matter. But don't forget that Spain is, I think, the third or fourth largest economy within Europe. Right? You have Germany, France, and it's either Italy or Spain. Right? It's either one of them. So of course it's going to affect the economy. We just don't know what kind of scale it's going to be in, in terms of the impact to the financial market. But as for now, this event on top of the ECB events had significant weakened euro. Now let's take a look at what I'm being by buying rumor sell fact. This is a classic buying rumor sell fact. So if you see this chart, basically, oh sorry,、uh, let me let me close this. So basically. I got in this week again. This is one of my favorite go-to strategy, you know, because it's 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 highly probable. So I got in actually at here. Let me draw a box here. So at beginning of the week, we start having this kind of、uh, buy into euro, 
at, for no other reason. Basically, you can just tell market start buying ahead of the ECB, hoping that the events will be a very positive one. Now, why do I have the confidence to sell? That for for two two very simple reasons. First thing is that I have a lot of confidence over US dollar. As I mentioned, fundamentally it it is way much stronger than Euro. Now, sentimentally, I think. Ever since the budget plan passed last week, and right now the Federal Reserve, uh, the chair selection is com coming down to Powell and Tyler, US dollars should remain strong. Now, why do I sell Euro? It's basic on, basically based on the uh, ECB's previous behavior. So previously, every other meeting, basically you will know certain chair to be dovish or hawkish. Now, Draghi, is a very notable dog. So of course, I think no matter what he wants to do, he's always worried about the uh, euro to go too too high, right? So whenever, whenever he become a little bit positive, or if he release some kind of positive uh, news, euro always shoots up, and he does he does not like it. So most likely this time he is going to say something that's very positive for euro, right? He's going to cut down the asset purchase. How is he gonna deliver it? Well, of course, he's gonna deliver it in a negative way. He's not gonna deliver it in a happy way. So basically, that's my logic behind this trade. Now, of course, something I was did not anticipate is, is during the week we had another rumor that Yellen might be the next chair, continue to be the next chair, and that's why this retracement actually become very very high to almost stop me out. Now my stop loss was was high here. So basically, I'm shorting this if you draw a Fibonacci cycle here I'm shorting this cycle so 50% was my entry this above 1% was my stop loss now aiming at here at 170 160 so of course as you see that's what happened it dropped significantly and continued to uh, go lower so it's a very classic uh, buy rumor sell fact effect now what's gonna happen next week honestly I don't know because really right now there's not much catalyst going on for euro we will have to see how the market react to the Catalonia events if, uh, for us to see what's gonna happen next week now the biggest events next week will be British Palm which is the super Thursday so BOE is going to have the rate decision next week. Right now, the market highly anticipate a rate hike. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, rate hike is very probable because previously they cut interest rate right after the pre exit as insurance, meaning that they don't really, they didn't really need to cut the interest rate right there, but they were anticipated a basic recession into a UK economy. So that's why they cut interest rate. And what happened is that that not only that did not happen. Now, first of all, people dump British pound right after pre exit, so that's already a good thing for the economy for as as this for the export. Uh, the second thing is that the the domestic economy was actually very resilient, so uh, a lot of people were criticizing BOE to maybe moved a little bit too fast. Right. So right now, that's why it's more probable for them to basically raise interest rate to remove that insurance okay so that's sort of a backstory now this week a notable thing was the gdp data coming out from uk the expected number was 0 0.3 0 0.3 and it's actually better than the expected number so you got the previous one previous quarter another previous quarter was all only at 0 0.3 so this was a, a big of a nice push for british pound so because of that, right now, uh, the anticipation into Bank of England hike interest rate is very high. However, I will tell you my uh, prediction is that we will have another classic buy rumor sell fact effect. So if you just pick a currency like Pound New Z, okay, Pound New Z right now uh, we are at the downside for British Pound. So what's gonna happen next week is we might start retracing here, going to the higher side. Same thing as Pang Aussie, same thing as Pang Cat, same thing as Pang Yen. Okay. So my personal, what I what I like to see is that next week 
we might have a start starting from Monday, Tuesday, we might start having a bullish sentiment into British pound. Why? Because people are buying it into the Bank of England events. However, at the event, I don't think Bank of England is going to First of all, I think they might really hike the interest rate. However, I don't think they are going to give a hawkish hike. That means they're going to hike interest rate, so the market will be happy, but the expectation will be fulfilled. And once the expectation is fulfilled, you have to ask yourself, what's more? What's more to drive this currency? What's more to drive this, this, this economy, basically? So once that's fulfilled, market will start looking out for more. And they wanted to see if Bank of England going to give a more future hawkish uh, sentiment. I don't think that's going to be the case. The reason is because right now, pre exit negotiation is still up in the air. Although we do have a much better uh, outcome last week, but it's still up in the air. At this point, there's really no reason for central bank to become so positive, you know, in terms of the future. Especially right now, you know, a lot of economists were saying that yes, the export business had been uh, had been supported by this weak British pound currency. However, domestically, the retail consumption was not doing so well. Now let's let's take a look at that trading economy. So this is a very nice website if you uh, like to look at a more deep. Economy, economic data. So if we hit, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the consumptions. See if we have here. So if we look at business confidence, right? It's it's very negative right now, and uh, service PMI was okay. It's gonna come out next week as well. Consumer confidence, it's also negative number. Retail sale and retail. Let's look at year, yearly data. Okay, let's more have a big picture. So retail sale, as you can see, it's really flat. Okay, it's really flat uh, for year on year. What about month to month? So retail sale month to month was a, a negative number last last uh, last month. So this is not a good picture for UK because. What's happened is that people right after the pre-exit, biggest worry for this currency drop was that you know you're going to hurt the domestic economy, and and right now that might be the case. So once you raise interest rate, you know you might hurt the consumption even more. So it's really uh, economic economically. I don't know if there's I don't really know if there's any reason for Bank of England to be very positive or hawkish for the future economy now they might give some you know uh, talk trying to lift their currency up but economically speaking i don't really know the reason why would bank of england have have, have any any basically any sort of evidence to to be so hawkish so if that's the case that means they might raise the interest rate so here okay here's a here is the possible scenario if next week, starting from Monday, you start having this upside movement for, for British pound, basically, I would think that's a buying rumor action. And how, whether you know it's going to sell the fact is first of all, what kind of outcome you might have. So if the Bank of England does not raise interest rate, then of course, British pound is going to drop because that's a very big disappointment. Okay, so British pound is going to go down. The second thing is if Bank of England raise interest rate, that means market has already anticipated that. So that means British bond is also going to drop because people who are anticipating that they are going to take their profit, right? Because the, the fact the, the rumor has been anticipated. So it's gonna go down. Now third is they're gonna look out if Bank of England give any sort of hawkish talk. Now if Bank of England does not give that, which I think they would, they would not. If they don't give that kind of hawkish talk, then British pound will also drop. So that means no matter what happened, as long as you have a buy rumor action, very likely you will have a sell fact effect. So you might have exactly the same pattern as Euro dollar had this, this week. So we'll see, we we'll never know, right? I'm just saying that's my personal game plan. 
we might not even have that. But at least if that's what happened in British Pound, I would be very happy to trade it. Uh, Canada also have Bank of Canada this week. Now the rate was uh, unchanged as expected. However, the statement was much more dovish as uh, as people anticipated. So basically, right now, uh, Bank of Canada is on hold. I wouldn't say they are really negative, right? Because they're still confident about their economy. But right now, they're very careful because after two consecutive rate hike. They don't want to basically jeopardize the economy. Don't forget, Canada is doing very well within the G7 country right now. This year, the GDP is the highest among the G7. So they don't want to jeopardize their economy uh, by messing up the, the, the central monetary policies. So right now, they are completely data dependent. That means right now, the focus will again shift back to the fundamental data. So that means the fundamental data for Canada right now will become much more important and much more tradable. So next week, you will have uh, employment data coming out, which will usually come out at the same time as NFP. Most people don't really notice that. They, they don't really trade it because people put a lot of emphasis on the, the non-farm payroll. But it's a quite nice data to trade for me personally. So we'll see how the employment is doing. The employment, the labor market had been very strong for Canada. So if it's continue to be the case, of course, we will have a much better uh, sentiment into CAD. Don't forget, right now, CAD is a very weak currency this week just because the Bank of Canada events. But if the fundamental data can turn around next week, that will change the sentiment. We also have the GDP data for CAD next week uh, coming out Tuesday. So right here, GDP month to month. So again, it will be a good event if this thing will, we can have something positive that will basically stop the negative sentiment. Then you might be able to buy CAD versus other weaker currency. However, if that's not the case, if you have a negative surprise, then CAD will most likely continue to go down. Another thing to look at CAD is the oil market. Now, right now, as you can see from WTI, it shoots up to $54 per barrel. What happened is that OPEC is most likely going to extend the oil output curve. So that's a very positive news for the oil market, hence a positive news for Canadian dollar. So let's keep going now. Australian dollar this week, we, again, Aussie was a neutral currency you know, in my previous video. The negative sentiment come from the central bank is not in a hurry to hike interest rate. That was perceived as a negative sentiment. However, because the commodity market, especially the copper market, you know, at the beginning of the week, it was quite supported right here. However, uh, the biggest negative sentiment came this week from the CPI data. This week, the CPI data was highly anticipated. Look at the expectation was 0.8 from 0.2, and the trimming CPI was 0.5. However, both data missed expectation and dropped. I actually got in this trade ahead of the candidates trying to, uh, so it was a small position, trying to buy Aussie out of the positive data. And of course, as you can see, that's not the result. I got stopped out in my Euro Aussie trade. So, you know, that's always a thing. If you want to trade into the catalyst, not all catalysts are created equal. For ECB events, it's a more a human event. It means you have a, a basic, a, a better human behavior, a pattern to follow through because you know a certain central bankers to be a dovish or hawkish person. For fundamental data, it's, it's a harder to predict because data is just data, right? It's, it's really hard to predict. A lot of prediction or forecasts were a, a lot of time there, more often than that, they are wrong. And that's, that's fine because it, of course, it's hard to predict a, 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 the, a country's economy. So this, of course, put Aussie in a negative sentiment at the point. However, if you go down, you'll know that 0.6% is actually not that bad in compared to before. Of course, it's bad, worse than the, the expectation, but it's still okay at 0.6%. What about trimming data, which is what the RBA is looking at? 
Now, trimming at 0.4% also is not something so negative. So I'll say, I'll see again right now, it's flat. It's flat with a little bit negative sentiment. But other than that, it's not something I will buy or short largely, right? I wouldn't commit a full 1% in any Aussie trade just because I couldn't really tell whether it's positive or negative unless I have a counterpart, another currency pair that I can pair up with Aussie uh, and that has a better sentiment to judge. But for me right now, I will still think it's a neutral to a little bit negative. Now, New Z start the week with a very negative sentiment. So basically right now, if you want to trade New Z, forget about all the fundamental data because nothing fundamentally is important for New Zealand right now. Right now, there are three major factors to cause New Zealand to New Zealand dollar to drop so much. If you zoom out, look at New Z. It has been in a downtrend so significantly Basically, let me keep zooming out right here from July this year, from 0.75 all the way to what? Lowest point is what? 0.68, right? That's that's almost a thousand peeps, basically. So what happened? Basically, as I keep mentioned before, you have a very dovish RBNZ, which is the central bank. You have the New Zealand government came out and downgrade its forecast. Okay, that's the second negative reason for New Zealand. Third is suddenly two weeks ago, you have an upset in the uh, government that right now the Liberal Party is the uh, ruling party for the New Zealand government. That's a third negative sentiment. Now this week, beginning of this week, the Liberal Party had published their mandate, right? Their future policy, and the policy is very anti-immigration. It's very anti-foreign investment. Now, if you understand the New Zealand economy, of course, the first thing is the dairy product, right? Dairy product because they have a lot of uh, dairy products, very important. But second, most important thing is their uh, tourism and their foreign investment, because New Zealand itself is really such a small island far away from South Hemispheres, they really need this kind of uh, globalization in order to boost the economy. Now, however, the Liberal government right now, it's very anti this kind of foreign money. So right now, what's going to happen is if they really become very unfriendly toward this kind of foreign investment, of course, that's very bad for their economy. You know, it's, it's, it's really only going to make it worse. So because of that, New Zealand dollar had been dumped significantly. It, it, it is once again one of the weakest currencies. So nothing had changed. In fact, we even have a new negative sentiment to put it to the downside. Now, the last two is the safe haven currency. So nothing really changed fundamentally. But for Japan, you know, over the last weekend, of course, the Prime Minister Abe had won largely for the parliament, the upper house. So right now, that means his Abe economies will continue. That means Japanese yen continue to become a very negative currency fundamentally. Now, don't forget, both currencies are still safe haven currency. So, you know, any risk, on sen any risk of sentiment will cause a lot of safe haven inflow. So that's pretty much what happened this week. And a quick sneak peek into next week, as I mentioned. Now, Monday is a usual quiet day. You do have the uh, monetary policy statement for Japan, but it's not going to change uh, too much for Japan right now. So the real catalyst for me to trade next week will come from Canada GDP. I'll see if we can have anything positive or negative. Then Carney was sorry. The uh, Polas will speak. Followed by that, then you have employment data from Aussie, which I don't think is a big event. Okay, when I say I don't think it's a big event, doesn't mean the market is not going to react to it. The market might react to it, but it's not gonna change the fact that New Zealand dollar is a very negative currency. You also have a lot of Chinese data coming out here and Monday as well. Real big events to come from. Uh, Hold on, let's keep going. Wednesday, manufacturer PMI, ADP, non-farm payroll. All these are 
good risk events, but not tradable for me. Even non-farm pair, even sorry, if FOMC is not tradable for me, okay, because I don't really think. Basically, Federal Reserve is most likely to cap the rate on keep the rate unchanged, so it's not a big it's not gonna be a big surprise. The market is really right now focused on who is gonna be the next chair, so that's really what's gonna be more important. Trade balance from Aussie now Thursday will be the biggest event, Bank of England Super Thursday. So we'll see exactly whether they raise the interest rate, whether they give a hawkish or dovish statement. Follow through, you will have the. Uh, Actually, you don't have a press conference right here. Let's see. Yeah, you don't really have a press conference. You have Carney speaks right after that. But we'll see what happened. Basically, uh, this Thursday will be the most important, uh, uh, biggest catalyst to trade. And then finish up Friday, of course, down from payroll and the labor market for CAT. So a quite excited week next week of course we're gonna start with more a quiet monday and tuesday as usual this week as i mentioned uh all my dollar trade euro dollar dollar yen dollar yen i bought i actually bought here and all these are a down profit but my losing trade was from euro aussie and also british pound now british pound is a very uh very upset trade for me personally because i i had a lot of good reason to buy pump you know uh beginning of the week again we have a positive gdp data now that alone is not good enough for me but the reason i buy british pound is that i think a lot of traders will start pricing into the bank of england events next week however and that's that's true you know throughout you know, the middle of the trade, you can tell you have this nice uh, kangaroo tail, basically. It's a nice bullish candle. However, that was not the case. Pound continued to drop and stop me out. So the only lesson I'll say is that maybe I I got over myself. Maybe I shouldn't price in pounds at this week. You know, I should price in into the Bank of England next week because then I will have much better momentum. That's the first thing. Second thing is that I should not buy after the GDP. The reason is because the GDP of UK was never a high quality catalyst for me to trade. So I don't even know why I got into it. I was thrown into by the price action basically. So you have this huge drop, huge shoots up that got me kind of too emotional, too excited. So I got in right here, like, oh, I got to get in this trade. And that's a very classic of, you know, fear of missing the action. So again, it still happened. We still get emotions all the time, emotionals all the time and make uh, irrational judgment. So for me, that was the case in my trade this week. So basically, that's what happened. And again, next week, I'm looking to buy US dollar, looking to buy British pound. The British pound, again, I'm only looking to buy because of the Bank of England. I'm actually looking to, the game plan is to buy at the beginning of the week and hoping we will have a buy rumor sell fact effect. Then at the events, I'm looking to sell it. So I'm either gonna get out and place a short sell before the BOE on Thursday, or I'm gonna sell it right at the catalyst. And then if, if things work out, I will have you know a, a very two positive trade out of one single catalyst. So we'll see what happened next week, but it was quite exciting for me to uh, uh, to trade. And I guess, I guess that's pretty much it. You know, uh, that's a quick recap for this week, a sneak peek for next week. I will again publish the Monday weekly analysis uh, next Monday. Other than that, you know, have a great weekend. Remember to basically shut off your computer, stay away from the market because you do need to take a break in order for you to basically come back more fresh. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.